Hello everybody, welcome back to more political chatter. We are back with another 2024 election scenario. This one is a three-way race. I've done a couple of these between Biden and Trump and, you know, because that are the most two likely Democratic and Republican nominees. Then I did uh, a third-party candidate, I did uh, two third-party candidates once, um, Tulsi Gabbard in one scenario and Andrew Yang in another. And we are back with another third-party candidate, this time it being Mark Cuban. Now, Mark Cuban, um, he has, dec- he has... I mean, Wikipedia lists that he has declined, but he, you know, he's more made hints that, um, that he says he's no longer very much considering it as he was, uh, in, in, you know, recent past. I won't completely classify this as a complete ruling out a presidential bid or declining it, but would be pretty interesting. So Mark Cuban is an entrepreneur like Andrew Yang. Um, he, um, I mean, he's on Shark Tank. <laughs> um, he, he's really rich. He's a billionaire. He owns a basketball team. I forget which one it is. But um, let's see how well he will do. And Mark Cuban, uh, he is more left-leaning. He's a progressive, but he is not a member of the Democratic Party. He is an independent. So let's see him run against Trump and Biden. So uh, California and Washington, I would list as safe Biden. I mean, I could see Mark Cuban winning votes here, but I think that he would take an, like, like, he's not going to directly take votes away from Biden. He will take a few from Biden and Trump. So, in say, like, Washington, um, I personally think that he would take just enough away from both candidates to uh, make it a uh, safe state for it. Joe Biden. Hawaii would stay safe. Um, I mean, I see Illinois staying safe. D.C., Maryland, uh, Delaware, because it is Biden's home state. We'll get to New Jersey. I do think Mike, Mark Cuban will do very well in the state of New Jersey. Um, well, I'll just do it now. I think that it would go likely for Biden. I could see Mark Cuban taking a lot of Democrats away from Biden here because, um, you know, I really could see his agenda doing well in a progressive state like New Jersey. New York would stay solid. Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Vermont. I don't see Mark Cuban doing pretty uh, very well in the state of Connecticut. I just don't know why. Uh, but I'll list this. But we do have to remember this. Joe Biden is unpopular. Remembering that, I will make uh, the state of Connecticut likely for him. Means first, we'll probably stay safe. It was likely for Hillary in 2016, but I mean... I don't know. Uh, I don't think Mark Cuban will take all that many votes away from uh, Trump and Biden here. All right, moving to safe states for Trump. You know, Mark Cuban, we do have to remember, will do better in swing states and Democratic states. So, you know, these safe Republican states, they don't need to really worry about them much. Uh, these will stay solid Republican. Even after January 6th, many Republicans and Trumpian Republicans, they, don't, they uh, you know, many of them still deny that it, it even happened or that it was tr- actually Trump supporters. So, you know, all these states will stay safe for Donald Trump. And that puts Donald Trump at 173 safe uh, electoral votes and 152 safe votes for Biden. I did a couple likely states, and that adds 21 more on to make it 173. I see Mark Cuban doing very well in the state of Oregon, but but here's the thing. I really see him taking away from the progressive Biden base. I really do, because, you know, Republicans say like Oregon, they're not very progressive. But Mark Cuban, I think, you know, Oregon has an independent kind, his, kind of history, and I really see Oregon becoming pretty close. I think it's going to go lean Biden. I think it's going to be pretty close to becoming likely, but ultimately I do think it would do well enough. And I'm going to change my characterization on the state of Washington. I think Mark Cuban, you know, looking uh, back on this, I think it would be pretty close to becoming safe. But, you know, Mark Cuban will take a few votes away from Biden and, you know, some from Trump, but we do have to remember that he will take more away from Biden. So Washington becomes likely, Oregon becomes lean. Uh, moving over to Maine at large, this will probably be, uh, you know, mm, it'll probably be lean for Biden. And let's go to Maine second right now. I do think that Mark Cuban would carry Maine second congressional district by a, uh, I think by tilt margin. I do think that this would be an incredibly close race. But looking, but I mean, in the past, Maine's uh, second district has had a 
long history of voting for the independent candidate. They really liked Ross Perot. He just narrowly lost if he had stayed in the race. He would have definitely won one main second. But they they liked Ralph Nader. You know they like these uh, independent type candidates. And Mark Cuban really is that man. A lot of Republicans and Democrats will turn out for him. And you know saying that uh, the state uh, or I'm sorry the district of uh, well main second district, it went about what was it eight points to. Um, it went, yeah, I think it was this. It went eight points to Obama in 2012. Fast forward to 2016, it goes 10 points to Trump. That's an 18 point shift to the right. So it shows that these main second uh, voters, they are really willing to vote for the other side. They are willing to vote. They, you know, they're willing to not vote for their, to their party's nominee. So that just shows that, that Mark Cuban would do very well in main second congressional district district and i do think that mark cuban would carry that district and it's one electoral vote moving on uh to the state of alaska mark cuban will do very well here i think it would be enough to make the state of alaska lean you know biden doesn't add much i think that mark cuban would come in second behind donald trump moving on to the state of south carolina and mark cuban doesn't have anything special in the south i really don't see the south liking him that much i think that south carolina will stay likely for former president trump i just don't know why the south would really like would really like him and you know, 2020, how little these, uh, oh, Iowa and Ohio, uh, and, well, we'll get to Nebraska in a second, but how little Iowa and Ohio shifted to the left shows that Trump still has this appeal here. He still will turn out these rural voters. They still want to make America great again. So states like Iowa and Ohio, where Mark Cuban doesn't have anything special here and he won't add to the race much here, I think that these two states would go to, would stay in the Trump column by a likely margin. In Nebraska, second, Mark Cuban doesn't add much here. And with Biden extremely unpopular, I would put it in the Trump column by a lean margin. Moving down to Texas, remember, as I said, Mark Cuban doesn't have much in the South. Um, You know, he's not going to have a strong base in the South. Texas will stay likely. A state like Florida that really likes Trump, I could see becoming a likely state form, just increasing once again for the Republican Party. Because I I do see uh, Mark Cuban you know taking some democrats you know because florida is not like any other state you know especially the south they are very different and i really see mark cuban um excelling in the state of florida and of course he's going to take more democrats than republicans so florida i do think uh, with this split democratic vote would become a likely trump state in georgia probably lean in north carolina it will probably stay lean so that is a flip in georgia um anyway moving up to virginia um, I could see Mark Cuban doing okay here. I don't know. I, just, I don't think he has much here. Um, I don't think he will flip the race into the Trump column. I think that Biden will narrowly be able to hang, to hang on to it by a lean margin, probably around 1% to 2%. I, he could win here. You know, he is unpopular. We have to remember that. But uh, Virginia has rejected Trump many times, and I think they would uh, once again. Moving to New Mexico and Colorado, uh, New Mexico, I don't think Mark Cuban has much in the Sun Belt, as I said, in the South. Biden probably wins New Mexico by a lean margin, even though he did win it by 10 points in 2020. I think I see it shifting six points to the right. Um, well, just away from Biden, I should say, because Mark Cuban will win a few votes here. Moving up to Colorado, though, um, I will put this in the tilt Biden column because this is where Mark Cuban will excel. He will win a lot of progressives in the state of Colorado. I think that he could come pretty close to winning it, but ultimately I do think that he would take a lot of votes away from Biden. Um, and that will almost cause a Trump win, but at this point in time, um, I think that Biden would narrowly be able to hang on to it. But then coming to states like Arizona, I mean, that's going to become likely. I mean, saying that Mark Cuban will take at least, like, what, 10% of Democrats in the state of Arizona, because there are a lot of Repub- Democrats in Arizona who do not like Biden. This state becomes likely for Donald Trump. Mark Cuban, uh, I could see him doing pretty well here, but I see him doing better in the state of Nevada. And ultimately, it would put it in the Trump column, even though it had gone for Hillary, it had gone for Biden, and they had you know trended toward the democratic party um i don't exactly see biden hanging on to it in a scenario where mark cuban is in the race going to minnesota i see this being till uh trump we just have to remember this mark cuban will win at least eight percent in each state and with biden unpopular and with democrats not turning out for biden that will be a problem for the democratic party in a state like 
in the state like Minnesota. Uh, you know, Mark Cuban, he, you know, it's besides the fact that he will excel in this state or be weak in this state. Fact of the matter is he will take a chunk of votes away from Biden. And really with him unpopular and Democrats not encouraged to come out and vote while Republicans are, that really is something to talk about. But going on to uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, um, I think that Michigan, or I'm sorry, I think that Wisconsin would become likely. But uh, I think the blue wall is going to go Republican. Trump is going to win it for a second time, as he did uh, in 2016. So, yeah, I mean, um, you know, Mark Cuban, he is going to come third in every state. And remember, we just have to remember this. Uh you know, he will take votes away from Biden. And that's all you need. Plus, state of uh, New Hampshire, I do think, would go lean Trump. Um, I think Cuban will do okay here, but probably not enough to win the state. So, this is my final map. Donald Trump wins a second term with 326 electoral votes. He needs 270. To Biden's 211. And to Mark Cuban's one vote coming from Maine's 2nd Congressional District. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing joining my patreon which is in the description um and i'll see you whoops sorry about that drop the microphone and i'll see you all next time